that we can probably maybe get into what Sins is actually doing nowadays because that itself is a pretty big topic. Um, and you know, again, we got like research inside Sins, research outside Sins, um, and then all the numerous uh, spinoffs and startups. Um, but before diving in, um, I do want to be a little bit meticulous in how we frame this. Um, and I, I think that there's like a few different areas of research uh, or maybe stages of research that we can talk through. Uh, and that might be a description and discovery, like what are the real biological systems doing? Um, then we've got, you know, actually developing individual solutions for various processes. Um, and then finally, we've got the issue of integrating all of these solutions into a comprehensive package. Maybe the, maybe that third thing is a little bit further off. Um, but in terms of like maybe stage of applicability, I think that'd be really cool to take for framing. Yeah, I like that structure. Yeah. So yeah, let's start with discovery. So um, we don't do discovery at SANS. And the reason we don't go. is because our attitude is that we already know basically pretty much all we need to know to develop therapy. Um, everything that we don't know is stuff that you just, you know, it's basically the debug cycle. You find stuff out as you go, as you're developing the therapies, but you don't expect to find anything that's so fundamental that you know that you just have to start from square one again. Um, and we believe that we're in that position now. This was really the big thing that I brought to the field that, um, that helped to change everything, that everyone else was in the mindset of feeling, which had been true until, the, until I came along, that we didn't know enough, that we only um, you know, were scratching the surface of our understanding of how damage is generated in the body, and therefore we didn't have much of a chance of doing anything about it. And I pointed out that actually, if you're doing damage repair, that's fine. You can basically get away with knowing essentially nothing about how damage is generated. And for that matter, you can also get away with not knowing very much about how damage, once there's too much of it, translates into pathology. What you can, if you're repairing damage, then just as long as you're repairing it faster than it's being generated, you don't have to slow down the rate at which it's generated. And furthermore, if you're keeping it below the threshold that causes us to get sick, which of course there is a threshold because that's why we don't get sick until late life, right? Then um, again, you, you don't have to know what would happen if the damage did get above that threshold. Um, right, so, so that was a huge part of what I, came, what I brought to the field, the understanding of the value of sidestepping one's ignorance. So we don't do discovery, <clears throat> but we do do the next stage. We do ultra early stage translational work. In other words, we take what we know and we figure out how to get from what we know to what we'd like to have as, a, as an actual intervention to a type of damage repair. And we are completely comfortable with knowing it only at the very high level at, you know, in terms of its overall structure. But we have to have some structure there, some sense of how we would get from here to there. And then we start at the beginning. We do the cell culture work and so on to actually get some proof of concept. Then we move on to, of course, laboratory mice, um, normal kind of thing. And, um, and then we um, generally are able at this point to hand it off um, before we have to get anywhere near clinical trials, because by that time, the amount of de-risking that has already occurred is sufficient for at least the more courageous end of the investor spectrum to feel that it's worth writing much bigger checks than what they would write philanthropically to us as a charity. Um, and therefore, we can spin these things out of startup companies. We've done that half a dozen times now. And of course, it's not just us. We've, you know, nucleated an entire culture around this. So there's literally way over 100 companies now that are doing very closely aligned work. So then you bring, you bring up a very important point at the end of your question, which is the combining of these therapies into a panel. This is absolutely a vital component of what we do because damage repair by its definition is a very much a divide and conquer approach. Any one of these types of damage can ha happily kill you on its own, more or less on schedule, however well we fix all the others. And the thing is, there's no obvious commercial route towards doing that. The way that these, the reason why these early stage 
research projects can be spun out in comp into companies at this very early stage is because there are intermediate clinical applications for mm. There are always going to be some subset, some small number of people who, perhaps for congenital reasons, are accumulating one particular type of damage incredibly fast, far, far, far faster than a normal person would. But they're not accumulating the other type of damage all that much faster than a normal person would. So that means they get sick in a particular well-defined way and early, uh, early in life. And this, the repair of that one type of damage will help them a lot and therefore will be profitable. So that's the, that's the route towards eventual application. But there's no real way to, um, to, to incentivize companies that are in that position at that stage to actually distract themselves by working together and combining things. So we believe that this is a key thing that will remain for some time to come, the key responsibility of the nonprofit sector, specifically Sense Research Foundation. It's at a relatively early stage, of course, because at the moment, hardly anything is working well enough individually for us to use it as something to combine with other things that are working, right? But we're starting. Right now, we've got a project that's just beginning in which we combine the Zenkamal stem cell treatment with senolytics. So uh, I, I didn't catch that word. Senolytics. Oh, okay. These are drugs that kill senescent cells. So that's basically combining good examples of two of the seven strands of sense for the first time. That is really cool. That is really cool. 